Hello and welcome back to another episode of Bible Excerpts. We finished with the uh, mini-series or sub-series of Hezekiah and his reign. He was a very great king. It was, it was a great experience to see him. And now we're moving on. We're going into 2 Chronicles chapter 34. Now we're going to talk about Josiah today. Josiah and maybe Hilkiah. And I might not make this a, a very long episode today because my usual schedule is going to be a little bit different and so I won't be, I might not be at the cafe where I need to be to upload videos because, you know, my Wi-Fi here is so terrible. So it might be shorter so that I can easily upload it on time, but we will, we shall see. So we're in Second Chronicles chapter 34 and we're going to start with verse 1. It says that Josiah was eight years old when he was when he became king, and he reigned thirty-one years in Jerusalem. And he did what was right in the sight of the Lord, and walked in the ways of his fathers, Father David. He did not turn aside to the right hand or to the left. For in the eighth year of his reign, while he was still young, he began to seek the God of his father, David. And in the twelfth year he began to purge Judah and Jerusalem of the high places, the wooden images, and the carved images, and the molded images. They broke down the altars of the Baals, and the presents, and the incense altars, which were above them, he cut down. And the wooden images, the carved images, and the molded images, he broke in pieces, and made dust of them, and scattered it on the graves of those who had sacrificed to them. He also burned the bones of the priests on their altars, and cleansed Judah and Jerusalem. And so he did in the cities of Manasseh, Ephraim, and Simeon, as far as Naphtali, all around, and all around, with axes. When he had broken down the altars and the wooden images, had beaten the carved images into powder, and cut down all the incense altars throughout all the land of Israel, he returned to Jerusalem. We'll stop there and how it's comment. So Josiah is one of the youngest kings. I believe he might be the youngest. Maybe there is Joash. Was he seven or eight? I forget how old Joash was when he ascended the throne. Um, but he's one of the youngest kings that we have seen. Uh, let's see, that's the seventh year. I'm just, I'm curious now if, how old Joash was. And I apologize, you have to, oh yeah, he was seven years old. So Josiah is one of the second youngest kings, eight years old when he ascended the throne in Jerusalem. And it's very interesting what the Bible says about, about Josiah. Because it, it talks about how he did what was right in the sight of the Lord and how he walked in the ways of his father, David, and he didn't turn aside. But this is, this is kind of a sum, summing up his life. How I found it generally to work in Second Chronicles when they talk, introduce a new king. It talks about when he, how old they were when they ascended the throne. Uh, and then how long they reigned, and kind of sums up their life, whether they were good or bad. If you look in the chapter before, Second Chronicles chapter 33, Manasseh, he, it says that he was 12 years old when he became king, and he reigned 55 years in Jerusalem. But he did evil in the sight of the Lord, according to the abominations of the nations, that the Lord had cast out before the children of Israel. And so, that's how it, it works. And honestly, I'm just now noticing that. So, I'm very curious if that's how it worked throughout the book. Maybe, uh, not completely, but at least in these two chapters, and I think in the other ones, you'll find that it, it talks about when, how old they were when they ascended the throne in all the chapters where it introduces a new king. It talks about how old that king was. And then it goes on to, to talk about were they good or bad? That's kind of a nice thing. There's, there's no gray and black, or excuse me, there's no gray area when it comes to these kings. And the same thing is, is true with God when you think about it. it. It's simple. We either accept Jesus as our Savior, or either found to be those who keep the commandments of God and the faith of Jesus, or, or we don't. There is no gray area. It's all black and white. And you think about even David. He, the Bible says that he was a man after God's own heart. Even though he, he committed some atrocious sins but he was repentant he was remorseful and God
God did what he has promised to do for us. He made the sin, he blotted it out. And of course, one thing I, I've talked about this in my Sabbath school thoughts a while ago was the thought that Jesus, he does not just blot out our sins and that's it. There was a price to be paid for our sins. Jesus bore our sins for us. And he's the one who paid the price for it. And we need to remember that more. Remember that Jesus is the one who who ultimately, even though he blots out our sins, he was the one who suffered for it. He's the one who had to answer for it to God. That's a, a thought that if we if we dwell more on it, we will be more inclined to keep his commandments and not turn aside either to the left hand or to the right hand. But Josiah wasn't always like like this. He wasn't always a good king. Well, to be to be correct, he was not always a godly person. It says that it was in the eighth year, this is in verse three, that it was in the eighth year of his reign. While he was still young, he began to seek the God of his father. Okay, so eight years. So he was about 16 years old. So 16 years old. And he, it, the, the Bible doesn't really say what it was that made him want to seek the God of his fathers. But there was something in his heart, even though he was still young, he was still a youth. He wanted to, to find God. He was seeking God. And then a few years later, he had come to an understanding, either by the conviction of the Holy Spirit, you know, when John, I forget which chapter it is, one of the later chapters, it says that the Holy Spirit convicts us of sin. So I believe the Holy Spirit was working in Josiah's heart. It convicted him of sin the sin of the people and so it was in the 12th year that he began to purge judah and jerusalem of all the abominations that had been had been brought in and so he went on this cleansing campaign throughout all of his kingdom and in verse 6 um it says axes but literally literally translated it swords so he went around and broke down all these altars all these wooden images idols with the sword purging the land and trying to correct the mistakes and the fallacies that have been brought in because of Manasseh, Manasseh. and let's see and Ammon Ammon also came up it's very brief Ammon it's in chapter 33 his what he did is recorded in verses 21 through 25, very short. One of the shortest reigns I've seen talked about in Second Chronicles. But in Josiah, we find that he is a good king, he's a godly king. And even though he's a youth, even though he's just 16 years old, he stands up for what is right, what is the commandment of God. And he went and purged. He was a reformer as young as he was. He was unafraid to stand up. And I'm glad I mentioned Ammon now in the previous chapter because Ammon, his servants conspired to kill him, and they did that. So it wasn't it wasn't completely safe for Josiah to be doing this. People liked their altars, they liked their idol worship, and now Josiah's coming in and he's he's doing away with all of this breaking it down and insulting the the graves of those who had sacrificed to them and it's not it's not clear here if he killed the priests or if they had already been dead it, it's not completely clear to me but either way i don't believe that it was a popular popular decision for josiah to be cleansing and purging the land but he was convicted that this was the right thing to do. This was, what, this was what God wanted him to do. And that he needed needed to do this. Alright. Trying to decide if I have time for a few more. A little bit more 
I don't think I will today. This will be a short episode, which might be a nice a nice thing. But the the moral of the story, what we can find that applies to our lives today in this current year is no matter how young we are, we can seek God. No matter how young we are, we can do what God wants us to do. Even if that is standing up for for things that will make us unpopular. Even that is even though the right way is right, it doesn't make it popular. But don't be afraid. God is with us. And when the Holy Spirit convicts us to do what's right, we need to follow it. And we can take lessons from Josiah, from him seeking God, and from his boldness and willingness to do what was right, despite the consequences. And in the next episode, we're going to find out that um, Josiah is going to come to a more complete understanding of the law of God. But it's remarkable to note that he did not understand completely God's law before this. It was through his, his sincerity and his faith and his, his desire to do what God had asked him that he was given the Holy Spirit to lead him, to convict him of what needed to be done, what was wrong and what was right. And then he's going to find a more complete revelation of God's law, of God's character, and what God wants of him and for all of us. And that's how it works. Conversion can be done in steps, and light is revealed upon light, so that our foundation and knowledge grows and builds. But we know that wherever God leads us, as long as we have a sincere heart, I remember several episodes ago, we talked about whoever seeks God, God will be found by him. And that's what Josiah is discovering, is that God is being found by him and revealing himself to Josiah. So I look forward to seeing you in the next episode of Bible Excerpts. We continue to talk about Josiah and his reign. Uh, Josiah might be uh, two episodes, two more episodes after this. And then we come to the end of Second Chronicles. And I'm excited for what we're going to see in our series on Ezekiel. There might be a brief hiatus uh, between the seasons, but still keep watching Sabbath School Thoughts. Thank you to all my subscribers. And if you haven't, haven't subscribed, consider doing so. And leave a like if you enjoyed this video. But I hope that you have a, a great week. Hope to see you again soon. God bless you. And remember to stand up for our beliefs and to do what's right before God.